In other baseball news, my team, the Chicago White Sox, has made uh, history. (laughs) 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 Uh, Major League Baseball. Stupid White Sox. They are. They really are. Really are. Uh, I mean, what am I rooting for? You, you, you. I'm a believer in rooting for a team whether they win or lose. Now, I fully understand, and in, in, clearly, you've dealt with this in Cleveland with the Indians and the Guardians mm-hmm. and the Brown everybody, right? Um, I fully understand where people come from, and they go, "Why am I going to support uh, a perennial loser?" With my hard-earned money, why am I going to buy tickets and overpriced concessions? I fully understand that. But I am also away from home. I don't get to go to a home White Sox game, right? I have to root for them from afar. And well, so that probably people that are in Chicago and they're not going. They're not to going to those games. Those games. Nope. Um. So the White Sox are tied for the modern-day record of the most losses in a season. They're tied. You know, for a long time, everybody was like, well, at least they're not the 62 Mets. And now they are tied with the 62 Mets. Uh, The San Diego Padres yesterday beat the White Sox 4-2. to You know, it's funny. You can't always count on being able to beat another team. You know, now everybody here is uh, going over the Brown schedule with a fine-toothed comb. They go, oh, we should have beaten the Giants. And they, people who go into great detail on that stuff. Here's how this should all lay out. And you can't always count on that. But goddamn, if you were playing the Chicago White Sox this season, you knew you were going to go back home with three wins under your belt. It was a fait accompli. You knew it. Unless you were randomly the Red Sox or, you know, the White Sox beat a couple of good teams. They probably put their worst players out there, the other uh, other teams. So the White Sox, who are at 36 and 120. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, listen. It's, it's hilarious. We laugh so we don't cry. No, I laugh and the because Sox had, I, the I, Sox I, had I, been I, ahead I, yesterday, right? Yeah. They had been ahead. Uh-huh. I was peeking in. Uh-huh. And then that was wiped out in the eighth. Yeah. So yesterday, now on Saturday, the White Sox had tied the American League record of 119 losses that had been set by the Tigers in 03. Now the overall, don't laugh too hard, the overall major league record for losses is the Cleveland Spiders. What year? 1899. <laughs> they went 20 and 134. Five years ago. Yeah. That's why they have to, uh, the dubious distinction of being the most losses mm-hmm. in modern day record keeping. But the Cleveland Spiders in 1899 went 20 and 134. Hey, so they, they probably had the have games that were canceled because the sun went down in yeah, probably. the 1899 Yes, season. absolutely. You know how they yeah. say, well, in today's dollars, it yeah. would be this much. In today's wins and losses, White Sox probably stink more than the 1899 yeah. Spiders. And, uh, yeah, so the, the White Sox will play their last three regular season games now, math is a funny thing. I think these guys mathematically still have a shot at the playoffs. Uh, they'll play three home games there against the Angels. The Angels, another team that needed to win. We went over that math last week. Needed to win uh, some games. Of course, Grady Sizemore is the interim manager of the Chicago White Sox. And these guys ran out of things to say a long time ago. They ran out of any kind of spin. They're just... Resigned to eh, no loss is good. Things like that, right? No loss is good. Put that on the outside of guaranteed rate field. <laughs> right underneath World Series champions 2008 or 5, whatever it was. I think 05 we won the World Series. Right was, under that, that put no loss is good. I think it's 2005. Um, So there's no spin to put on this. Yeah, 2005. It's right there yeah, on because 
you guys had a pretty long drought too. Oh yeah, and it was right after the uh, Red Sox won in two thousand four, mm-hmm. and you guys won in two thousand five. So. Yep. Yeah. So anywho, that's what's going on. So much more exciting and gratifying uh, to be rooting for the Cleveland Guardians, my B team. That's why we, at least for me, mm-hmm. that's why I have an A, B, and a C team. And I have a National League team. Because you've got to be able to turn your eyes to something uh, that can get you excited, you know? And uh, people need something to be proud of. And here in Cleveland, Ohio, it's currently the Guardian. Now, I remember when the Astros were 100-game losers not even that long ago. Now look at them. Yeah, well, when you're uh, banging garbage cans yeah. to reverse your fortunes, they funny how that cheating. works. Yeah, funny how that works. I wish somebody over at the White Sox had said, we really need to cheat this season, especially since they're planning on bringing all these scrubs back. They're like, no, no, we don't need any lineup changes. We just need to really drill down and figure some things out. Okay, good. Because all these other teams have been kicking your ass all season. They're not changing up their lineups either. Because they don't need to. So, I don't know what you think is going to be different. But, all right. Grady. <clears throat> I've got some kids. Yeah, not a great audition. <laughs> What's that? Not a great audition to be the full-time manager. No, nah, he was just next in line. Yeah, was, uh... Kids corner! I don't think he wants to be there either. They are having some problems out there in Green, Ohio. I don't know that I've seen a lot written up about this, but I saw this. This is where Bridget's from. This is where our friend Bridget Linton, she's an alumnus of Green High School. That's her hometown. She is from, uh, I sent, she's the first person I sent the story to. I was like, what's going on here? Did you see this uh, out in Green, the homecoming Mm, controversy? No. Some students have been disciplined. And again, people who live out in Green have told me this is not surprising. And nobody's shocked by this, but you still kind of cock your head and go, really? You know, over the past decade or so, um, in the age of social media and everybody having a, a camera everywhere they go now on their phones, homecoming proposals and things like that have become a thing, right? Promposals. That's the portmanteau for people who are going to go to prom. There's. It can range from, you know, a, a, a pithy sign to choreographed dances, whatever, for the lols. Out there in Green, Ohio, uh, there were a couple of dudes with a hatchback to the car open. And they were framing what looks like a white piece of poster board. And because these people are minors, they blur their face out, right? But this went on Snapchat and then made the rounds. And their sign said, if we were black, we'd be picking cotton. But unfortunately, we're white, so we're picking you for Hoko. Which is short for homecoming. And you go, ha. You missed a lot of other ways you could have gone to land on this. So... I don't know how important it is that you go to homecoming with a creative guy, but this ain't it. If we were black, I'd be picking cotton, but unfortunately we're white, so we're picking They're you. They're sending two different messages for here. For homecoming. Because is it racist? Yes. But then they say, unfortunately, we're white, so they wish they were black. Maybe they want to pick cotton. But also, that's... Uh... And here's the, Just, <laughs> so that's, okay, again, something like this is not unprecedented, and we are the right. Florida of the North up here, so no big shock. But the thing that always interests me is the parents who want to stay anonymous. Of course. Out of fear of retaliation. Think about that. I don't want people to know who I am because there's a lot of people around here who get mad if we criticize this sign out there in Green, Ohio. Uh, four, three to four times a week, one parent said, my kids come home expressing that somebody has either uh, thrown the N-word around or calling uh, students of color brown skin or brown girl. She claimed her, I mean, imagine being black in green Ohio. Again, I've never been there, but if there are people who are like, yeah, um, 
we don't want to publicly criticize. Wish we had Bridget here. A today racist to speak dance on this. proposal. She could give us insight into the community. Yeah, well. I don't know. That, I, I, How I can't, diverse or not diverse it may be. But I can't imagine she, she's so sweet. I mean, I yeah. can't imagine she would have any kind of insight into something like this. And obviously the school has to put out this big announcement mm-hmm. that oh, this is up to our values and blah, blah, blah. This does not represent. <laughs> Whatever. And again, that's what the school uh-huh. has to do. And it's, but just when you see something like that, it's to the point where you kind of roll your eyes. Nobody's shocked. But how did you land on that? I mean, did you just learn about like the antebellum South? Yeah. In history class, you're like, I got. They're sitting around these two dopes. I got nothing. What do you want to do? Eh. How about the pig and cotton thing? All right. So a uh, green Ohio, and of course the photo goes viral. But I haven't really seen too much about it. I, I saw the photo last week. I think a listener who lives in green pointed me to the photo, which by that time had already started to make the rounds. It was originally posted to Snapchat, but um, but I haven't seen a whole lot about that. But they're cleaning up the mess out there. Now, of course, the huge cliffhanger. I know what you're saying. Did she say yes? Did she say yes? <laughs> Both young ladies. It's two yeah. guys holding up. Unless they're both asking one girl. And listen, you know your people. So these two dudes, uh, I don't know. Are they are they asking out black girls? Are they asking out white girls? You might see a sign like that and go, well, obviously these guys are asking out white girls. Not necessarily. The most amazing thing to me is how casual, and you black kids know this, is how casual and almost so casual to the extent that it's not even malicious the way a lot of white kids talk in high school. And you can't throw it at the feet of like, oh, they're listening to the rap music. That's been a lame argument for 30 years. I mean, the the lengths to which regular kids talk like this and it doesn't even cross their minds. Like, it's not like the, I guarantee these two kids are like, oh, is homecoming gonna, um, is homecoming gonna conflict with our KKK meeting? It's not like that. So nobody's really shocked. But, uh, did these girls say yes? And do you want to be seen with these guys? Right. Again, their faces are blurred, so you don't know who they are. Mm-hmm. But word's gonna get around. I'm sure in the community they all know. Uh, let me guess. Uh, Caden and Brayden. <laughs> Am I anywhere close? Uh, Tyler and Kyler. Uh, uh, so, yeah, out there in green, of course, the first person I thought of was our own Bridget Linton because that's her hometown and alma mater, and that can't make you feel good if you're from there. Also in Kids Corner, the Octo Mom is a grandmother. Remember the Octo Mom? Oh, yeah. Wow. This is the woman who about 10 years back, she already had a few of her own kids, and then she had artificial insemination or IVF or something, and she had she gave birth to the first surviving octuplets in history. So they called her the Octo Mom. I mean, this happened. I feel like this happened like, like 15 years right ago. after yeah. I got to Cleveland and we were talking about the Octo Mom, and everybody gave me a hard time. This is a woman who had plastic surgery because she wanted to look like Angelina Jolie. Did it work? Eno- uh, I mean, <laughs> enough? You, you, some people you look at and you go, I don't know who your doctor was. This woman, you look at her and you go, all right, I get it. I see what she was trying to do. Now, after she went viral for this, there was a fallow period for her, and she ended up kind of like, you know, pre-only fans. She was doing, you know, naked whack-off videos. Mm. And that's where I fell in love with her. <laughs> and everybody gave me a hard time because I said, hey, I don't know if you've seen this Octomom masturbating in the bathtub video, but I'm all in. I'm a big, big fan. She's 49 now, and if you follow her on social media... You would be among 252,000 people who do. Uh, one of her 10 sons. 
<laughs> just had a baby. She's, of course, a mother of 14. She already had six children when she had the octuplets. And uh, sure, that'll blow you out. That's why if you watch that bathtub video uh, for a certain amount of time, you noticed that the longer she was in there, how quickly the water level went down. Displacement. <laughs> <laughs> Archimedes would be proud. That water's got to go somewhere. So anyway, she's a grandmother. And she's 49. And I think she looks pretty good. Her 21-year-old son. She did let that slip, or she she mentioned that he had just turned 21, and uh, he's a dad now, and so that makes her obviously a grandmother. And... Um, Imagine you're one of the Octomom's kids. You know, people can point and give you a hard time, but by most accounts, she's been a real good mom. Uh, despite using her um despite using her womb as a school bus, <laughs> but her body her choice. But again, a good mom in the sense that all these things people were giving her a hard time for, she was doing to make money. The nude photo shoot. She was doing some porn. She was doing, like, celebrity boxing, right? Yeah. She tried to trademark the Octomom thing, and I don't think that worked. But So she had to support these kids. And whatever you think of what now she— she gets uh, to spoil her how, grandkids. How she ended up with all those kids, that's a whole other thing. Hey, Brett. Yes. What's going on, Brett? Uh, just driving home from work. I heard your conversation about Green, Ohio, so I just kind of figured I'd chime in because that's where I live. Please do. It's uh, it, it has been largely a farm town community for a pretty long time, and it is an up-and-coming area just south of Akron. Yeah. So it's uh, I'm, I'm not surprised that there would be some of that thought process there, but uh, it is... Uh, it is a very mixed community. Well, yeah, clearly, because, I mean, there, uh, there are, you know, they, they quote parents and students who are not white, you know, who are talking about, like, this is not an uncommon thing. But again, to see it written out as part of a homecoming proposal is um, there's something that's pretty ridiculous. Well, it's weird. I mean, mm. it's definitely weird. Um, there's probably black kids at that school that thought it was hilarious you know because like kids of a certain age there's a weird kind of because everybody is together you know they're not they're not it's hard to describe they're, you know a lot of they're times sensitive it's sensitive to it, it yeah, yeah a lot of times it's the adults who who you know get a full head of steam and understandably but so you're from green bread or that's where you live that's where i live yeah um, didn't grow up too far from there, though. Mm -hmm. So, well, again, maybe this thing isn't really blowing up, other than you know, briefly on social media, because I just haven't seen that much about it. And when I first saw it, I was like, "Oh my god, this is going to be national news for a week now," and it's all anybody's going to know about right. Green Ohio, you know. So, okay, thank you, Brett. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Take care. Thank you, thank pal. Appreciate it. There's Brett, Green Ohio. Um. So yeah. Okay. Congratulations. I've got to take a break here. I'm a little bit late.